Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa coming to you live on the scripture prescription this amazing and wonderful morning. As always, I'm excited and privileged to have this time to share with us the word of God as laid in my heart for us. So I want to welcome you wherever you are. Uh, I know that the Lord will bless our lives in a special way. And I know that every morning, Paul, God builds capacity in us to be better people, better believers in whatever that we do in our lives. I want us to pray, then we'll listen to the word that the Lord has laid in my heart for us this morning. Let us pray. Father, indeed, we thank you this morning, first, for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you, my Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross many years ago for us, that we can be redeemed. And my Father, come to the commonwealth of God. I thank you this morning. Thank you for opening our eyes that we can see the secret that is in the action that you send your son to come and do for us. Now, this morning, as we sit to listen to your voice, I pray, Lord Almighty, for revelation. I pray for impact. I pray for the touch of God in our lives. And I pray that, Lord, the grace of God will be sufficient to touch us, O oh God. I pray that the Spirit of God will give us understanding from whichever position we find ourselves in. It's my prayer and desire that God you bless each of our lives by the grace of God. I want to thank you, Jehovah, and to give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. Wherever you're following us from, I want to welcome you into this particular session. And I believe that the Lord will be able to speak to us in a very, very special way by the grace of God. And I know that you're going to be blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, this morning, I would like to speak about a subject I have titled, Build Capacity to Wait. Build Capacity to Wait. And I speak about this very, very, uh, very, very important subject because it is not everything that you set out to do or you desire to get that you will receive immediately. It, it takes time to build a character. It takes time for a plant to grow. And therefore, it is important for us to put into context everything that we want to do in our lives because it is clear that it's not everything we set out to do that will come out instantly. So we must build the capacity to wait. In other terms, you can, it's important for you to know we will need to exercise patience in our lives even as we wait for the fulfillment of that which God has said he will do in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I would like us to read our Bibles in the book of Habakkuk, chapter number two. We're going to read only one verse. The book of Habakkuk, chapter number two. We're going to read verse number three. Then I'll put into context what I'm trying to talk about this morning. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. This is what the Bible says. For the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurries to the goal of fulfillment it will not fail even though it delays wait patiently for it because it will certainly come it will not delay let's read from amplified standard version for the vision is yet for the appointed time and it has to towards the end it shall not lie though it tarry wait it because it will surely come it will not delay praise the name of the lord hallelujah now i want you to understand that there are many things we want to happen in our lives many there are many things you look forward to there are many things you want to see happen come to fruition 
people would tell you, and we all know, and I've spoken about this before, that even life, the propagation of life, has a time period. From the time a child is conceived, the time when they are born, it is about nine months, they are about. That is what God has planned. That is what God has structured. You don't need to, to be told that a child will come at nine months. Now, if the child comes early, it's called premature birth. If the child comes after nine months, it is delayed birth. The timing of a child is actually nine months. And therefore, you have as a parent, the mother or the father, you have got a period of nine months to wait before you can bring into your hands that particular child that God has blessed your life with. Now, when you hurry the process, it means you get a product which is not fully developed. When you rush a process, when you want something faster than it's planned or envisaged, you get a product which is not perfect. If it's about life, it's immature. If it is late, it is something that is delayed. And so you don't get the product that you desired or you wanted to have in your life. Now, many people sometimes give up when the, what they are looking for is just about the corner. Many people lose out on what, God they, what they wanted to get just because they did not have the capacity to wait. One of the people in the Bible who did not build capacity to wait was King Saul. Now, it is clear that the service, the offering of sacrifice was done by the people appointed by God. In the Levitical order, in the priestly order, those were the individuals who were allowed to offer sacrifice. But when the prophet delayed King Saul, who had another direction, another, revel another anointing upon him, the kingship anointing, he went forward and sacrificed. Immediately he had done the sacrifice. Then the prophet appeared and said, what stupid thing have you done? Then God has rejected your kingship. And that's how Saul lost the kingship. So when you do not build capacity to wait, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Sometimes we feel like we want to rush the process. Sometimes we feel like we want to jump the queue. Sometimes we feel like we have been forgotten. Sometimes we feel like, oh, how comes this has happened to this person and not me? We feel we want to hasten the process. But I'm here to tell you, child of God, that everything designed for your purpose and your blessing will come. Every Everything desired, everything that God wills for your life will come. The most fundamental issue to know is that it is only in the timing and in the will of God that certain things will happen at the right time. In due season, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. And therefore, everything that we set out to get or to do has to be in the timing of God. Have you ever been? into a place and you're wondering why somebody has not shown up at the time you anticipated or the time you wanted you feel like you know you're about to give up but i want you to know there's something i've called the clock of god it's a big it's a big discussion it's a big topic but i want you to know there is what we call the timing or the clock of god when we talk about in due season, in the time of God, we are not referring to our time as we know it. We are referring to the time in dependent on what or the things God wants to happen at a particular time in our lives. And therefore, our planning, our ears must be listening carefully to the clock of God. And the disciples and even the prophets of old knew when you hear the prophet Elijah saying that we'll sacrifice at the time of evening sacrifice, there was a time, there was a clock, there was a system that the prophet understood. The clock of God, the timing of God has never changed. God operates in seasons and timings. Have we 
That's what tells us. And the children of Issachar knew how to interpret times. And they knew what Israel ought to do. They understood the timing. They understood the clock of God. What am I saying, beloved, this morning? I'm here to say that we have to build the capacity to wait. Sometimes people have been reckless in how they have used their time. They have wanted to hasten the process. They have wanted to, uh, you know, jump the queue to arrive at a place. But I want you to know, child of God, when you purpose to jump the queue or hasten the process, the result might not be exactly as that which God intended for you. If something is destined to stay in a place, what I've termed scientifically as incubation period, if you jump that particular process, then the product might not build capacity to be or to bring out the design or the purposes that the originator, or in this case, God, intended for each one of us. If you break the process for, you know, for a butterfly when it's trying to make its wings strong, if you help the caterpillar, if you help that particular process so that the butterfly does not build enough muscle for its, 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 its wings, then that butterfly might not even fly. You must be very careful not to interfere with the process of God. I know that this is a difficult message, but it is the truth. There are many things we try to help. And if we did not just allow the process to go through, maybe the people or the individuals we are trying to help would have been, been better people. There there are people because they never went through the process of life. They were assisted in every step. They were, everything was done for them. If they, they were not even allowed to think. They were not even allowed to make decisions. They were not even helped to do anything. They just were helped in each and every step. Now, if the people who helped them are not there at a particular time, these people are going to be in trouble. They're going to be in trouble because as they look, you know, everywhere for somebody to help them, they have nobody to help them, then their life will just literally collapse. Praise the Lord. This morning, I have come to encourage you, child of God, just to let you know by the grace of God that you need to build capacity to wait. And waiting doesn't mean that you wait forever. No. What I'm saying is that there are things we want in this life that will not come exactly at the time as we feel we want them. Not at all. Now, the fact that we are waiting means that God then has the time to develop us to be the people that he wants us to be. Remember, we are not of our own. We are owned by God. And God desires that this particular person, this individual I have created, will live to serve my purpose. Will live to serve my purpose. Will live to serve my purpose. So this morning, child of God, wherever you are, I want you to know by the grace of God that we must therefore build capacity to move forward in the direction, in the purpose, and in the plan that God wants for us. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know by the grace of God that our Father in heaven desires that we can build muscle in every aspect of our lives to realize his intention and his purposes in our lives. So don't be quick to hurry the process. Don't be quick to jump the queue. You must build capacity not only to wait, but to handle the blessing that God is about to release in your life. And that is a subject for another day. This morning, I'm only speaking about building capacity to wait. Sometimes people struggle with small issues like building capacity to wait for somebody else to speak before you can interject and also communicate. 
A lot of people are struggling with this. Struggling that they have. They, they want to speak. Even before somebody makes their point, they want to jump in, meaning they were not listening. We must build capacity to wait. Sometimes when you don't want to listen to what other people are saying, we might be missing out very critical information that can help our lives. Building capacity to wait. And I therefore submit to you as your servant, as your man of God, that you have to ask God to help you develop the capacity and ability to wait. To wait. And this I know is an issue that many people are struggling with. But this morning, I ask that God will intervene in each of our lives as we wait, as we build capacity to wait. God will speak to us clearly and we will know what God is doing in our lives to assist and to favor us. This is what I came to speak to us this morning. And I pray that the Lord blesses you, the Lord opens your understanding to see that which he's doing in our lives. May the good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you this morning. We have spoken about you, Lord, helping us to build capacity to wait. I pray this morning that you're touching lives. You're touching families, oh God. You're touching children. You're touching business supervisors. You're touching leaders. You're touching people everywhere to build capacity to wait. I dedicate this summon, Lord, to each one of us that my Father, you will touch our lives and help us to build capacity to wait. Though the vision tarries, it will come to pass. Everything we desire, everything we anticipate, everything we want, Lord, we ask that my Father, through your word, you will bring it to pass in the clock system of God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. The good Lord be with you. The good Lord continue to, his face continue to shine upon you. This has been your host and your servant, Pastor Justin Sacco, coming to you live on the scripture prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you as he helps you to build capacity to wait. God bless you. Amen and amen.